Okay. All right, okay, all right. How y'all doing today, man? Hope y'all doing good, staying well, staying healthy, all that great stuff, man. And we got a Charles Barkley video, man. All right, this is how good was Charles Barkley actually? All right, shout out Nonstop Sports. If you want to see the original video, the link will be in the description. So, a lot of people, you know, know him as the funny analyst, Donut Man, you know. The person Shaq always roast <laughs> i really love the scene charles barkley and shaq get at it bro they they be they the funniest one of the funny funniest duos ever bro they should make a they should honestly make a movie together real talk think about that shaq and charles barkley making a movie now i know they might not be able to act but i'm just saying like it's just funny subscribe if you're new you know what I'm saying join the fan all that great stuff without further just straight in the video man three two one let's go bro Younger NBA fans think of Charles Barkley as the funny analyst on Inside the NBA, but not fully realizing what a beast of a player he really hey. was. Barkley is one of the best power forwards hey. to ever play, and he remains hey. one of the best players that never won an NBA title. Here's the career retrospective of Sir Charles Barkley. How good was he really in his prime, and where does he rank? His vertical was crazy. Ratings? He was like, it was fair to say he was like Zion yeah. Williamson back then. Charles Barkley was born and raised that makes in sense. Like, that's how, that's how, that's how most of his childhood playing must bounce basketball he had. and eating. As a junior in high school, he weighed 240 pounds at 5 foot 10. Sheesh. Nobody thought that he would make it as a player. And even though he grew to 6 foot 4 during the summer, his weight also wow. ballooned. And Barkley had cleared the 300 pound mark. Oh my. Even at that size, Charles was still unbelievably jumpy and mobile, which got him a scholarship from the University of Auburn, then exclusively known for football. In college, Barkley still had a lot of trouble with weight and would often order multiple pizzas almost every night. Mm. And by the morning, there would remain nothing but the carton boxes in which they came in. Assistant coach Sonny Smith he was that heavy? a general opinion on Barkley look like during it. his Auburn days. He's fat, but on the court, he's like a hurricane. He clears out everything in front of him. Barkley's trademark play was grabbing the rebound, dribbling the full length oh of the court, gosh. and then finishing with a thunderous jam at the other end. Charles played center at Auburn and led the Southeastern Conference in rebounding in each of his three college seasons. Despite being shorter than every other oh, center excuse me. at least four or five inches, hey! because of his hefty posterior and crazy athleticism, he earned himself the nickname the Round Mound of Rebounds, which stuck for mm. the rest of his career. I've Charles never heard averaged 14.8 points on 68% shooting, 9.6 rebounds, 1.6 assists, and 1.7 blocks per game in college, and led the Auburn Tigers to their That's first crazy, ever appearance man. in the NCAA tournament in 1984. This earned him a place in the second All-American team and the fifth pick in the 1984 NBA draft, where the Philadelphia 76ers selected him in the best draft class in history. Hmm. Moses, and adjusting to the NBA, Barkley didn't want to get drafted by the Sixers because he thought he would only be able to make $75,000 because of Philadelphia's salary cap situation. Mm. So, he intentionally went on a two-day eating binge just before the draft so that the Sixers would pass on it. He, and he could earn more money somewhere else. However, the Sixers selected him despite Barkley weighing over 300 pounds. Oh my gosh. When the season started, Charles found out that he couldn't dominate the NBA being 50 pounds overweight. Unlike Michael Jordan, who got drafted in the same draft class by the perpetual lottery team in Chicago Bulls, Barkley came into a veteran team who had just won yeah. the NBA championship in 1983. In Philly, he was schooled by two future Hall of Famers, that. that's a, Julius that's a Irving picture, and Moses Malone. It was Malone who became Barkley's primary mentor fire, and the person fire. who had the biggest influence on his NBA career. You're fat and you're lazy, Moses <laughs> said to Barkley during his rookie year. If anybody else had said that to him, a fiery 22-year-old Charles would have probably cursed him out and kept eating pizzas. Word. But because Moses Malone was a three-time NBA MVP and the finals MVP from the 1983 championship team, Barkley had no other choice but to listen. He trimmed down to 250 pounds, which mm. has more or less been his playing weight throughout the best years of his career. And even though he wasn't bad as a rookie, averaging 14 points and 8.6 rebounds per game, after he lost those that's 50 decent, pounds, yeah. he averaged 20 and 13 as a sophomore, Sheesh. leader of the team and early playoff exits. After Barkley's second season in the NBA, the 76ers decided to trade Moses Malone and give the team's reins to Barkley which was a huge mistake. Mm. It's not that Barkley wasn't capable of carrying a team, mm. 
but the fact was that Moses had a lot of good basketball left in the tank. Yeah. Big Mo was an all-star yeah, in the next three years in Washington and Atlanta, averaging 21 points and 12 Ooh, rebounds. Excuse me. The players that the Sixers got in return didn't pan out, and Barkley might have won a championship in those three years with Moses. Dang. Instead, he became by far the best player on the team, which was great for the stat sheet. But he lacked the quality support to make it far in the playoffs. After Dr. J's retirement in 1987, the Sixers didn't win a playoff series in four years, despite wow. stellar performances from hey. Barkley. Oh, Sir Charles averaged 26 goodness. points, 12 rebounds from 1986 to 1991. In each season, he was in the NBA top 10 in both scoring and rebounding. Hey. He led the league in true shooting percentages four years in a row in that span. Wow. Along with four assists, he was dishing out every night. By the end of the 80s, Chuck was not far behind Magic and Jordan in the contention for the best basketball player alive. However, mm. frustration grew over the Sixers' management's inability to build a good team. Barkley had the biggest mouth in the entire league, and he often criticized the organization's I leadership. See that thing shining in your I see that thing, I see that thing glowing. The media. This was also reflected on the floor where he often got into verbal and physical duels with rival players, as well as quarrels with fans. Oh, 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 oh. It didn't matter. It all culminated in January of 1991, when he responded to insults from the stands by spitting at the man who insulted him. But instead, he spat on the little girl sitting in that part of the stands. Right, that incident changed him forever, as he vowed never to lose control like that again on the court. For the 1992 season, Barkley was named an all-star for the sixth year in a row. But after the Sixers failed to make the playoffs, Charles was fed up, and the Sixers finally gave in and traded him to Phoenix. Mm. Dream Team, MVP, and a trip to the finals. Charles was among the 12 players to represent the USA during the 1992 Olympic Games in Barcelona, the first time ever that Americans had sent pro players to the Olympics. Charles was the best player on the Dream Team, leading the team in scoring with 18 points per game on a phenomenal 71% shooting. Hey, after he won the gold right in there, Barcelona, okay. Barkley arrived in Phoenix in the best shape of his life. He never looked better, he never sounded more immersed in basketball, and Word. his confidence was through the roof. Because for the first time since he was a rookie, hey. he had a quality collection of teammates to accompany him. The Suns were led by him and fellow All-Stars, Dan Marley and Kevin Johnson, and won 62 games in the regular season best record in the NBA. With 25 points, 12 rebounds, and 5 assists on average, Barkley deservingly won the Most Valuable Player Award for the 92-93 season. Chuck was fantastic throughout the playoffs, especially in the West Finals against the Sonics, where he pushed the Suns to victory with a triple-double in Game 7. In the Finals, Barkley and the Suns were awaited by Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls, Word. who were aiming for a three-peat. The 93 Finals is among the best final series in NBA history, where Jordan, Pippen, and Barkley played the best basketball of their careers. Chicago stole the first two wins in Phoenix. The Suns got the third game after three overtimes. Mm. In the fourth, Michael Jordan dropped 55 points for Tough. a close Bulls win, with Phoenix sending the series back to Arizona for two deciding games. In Game 6, the Suns had a hey. two-point lead with 15 seconds to go. But then John Paxson showed up and hit a three for the Bulls' hey, John third championship title. Despite not excelling in all six matches, tough, Barkley man. showed all the splendor of his talent. The transition game, the great understanding of geometry on the floor, the physical strength, the post-up game, mid-range shooting, and of course, rebounding. He also showed a tremendous amount of heart and will to win. And although MJ defeated him in a direct clash, Barkley proved that he certainly had the right to put his hands on the MVP trophy that season. Yeah, Chuck that's, that's in the same the same time him and Jordan's in the same league. Like, that's huge, bro. Real talk. Which didn't even paint the picture of how good and dominant he was that year. Finals years and playoff disappointments. Oh, man. Barkley was crushed by the defeat against the Bulls. A blank stare at the press conference after the finals said it all. The Suns had two more great seasons, but they lost twice in a row against the later champions, Houston Rockets, after holding a 2-0 and 3-1 lead. Barkley then got into a beef with Kevin Johnson, and that shattered the Suns team, one of the best who failed to win the title. Barkley healed his wounds with another Olympic gold medal in 1996, hmm. where he was again the top scorer of the U.S. Olympic team shooting a staggering 82% from the field. Wow. Chuck then went to Houston to try 82? and win a championship with Clyde Drexler and Hakeem Olajuwon. But the trio were no too. longer in their prime and could not make it to another NBA Finals. Mm. Barkley spent four years in Houston, and his production slowly but surely dropped in each of those four years. 
A quadriceps rupture sidelined him for four months in his last NBA season. But Charles returned because he wanted to leave the game on his own legs. He scored that. the last basket of his career after an offensive rebound against the Vancouver Grizzlies, after which he left the floor and finally said goodbye to basketball. Legacy In 1986, Barkley became the shortest player in league history to win the NBA rebounding title with 14.6 oh, rebounds up. per game. At 6'5", Barkley was out-rebounding 7-footers on the regular. And bear in mind that he played in the golden era of NBA centers. Barkley never yeah, averaged less yeah. than 10 rebounds per game after his rookie season. And because he did this at 6'5", many believe that he was the best rebounder that ever played, together with Dennis Rodman. Wow. He often told me, just shoot, I'll catch every miss and put it back in the basket. It was mostly like that. His desire to catch the rebound was the biggest I've ever seen in my life said Hersey Hawkins, Charles' teammate for four seasons. Chuck was unstoppable in transition, mm. very similar to LeBron James, as nobody would dare to put their body in front of a 250-pound freight train when freight he sprinted train, at bro. full speed. When he got the ball deep in the low post, there was almost nothing that defense could do to stop him. Right. Barkley combined his huge butt with astonishing All explosiveness right, okay. <laughs> scored almost without fail against All players right. who were uh, much taller than him. Okay. If there was a double team, Charles would always Word. find an open teammate, which is proven by the career average of four assists per game, a big number for a power forward. If he won a title, he'd be higher on the list of the best NBA players in history. But even without fist, one, fist, fist. he's among the five best players at his position and 50 best overall. Other than his stellar play though. on the court, Barkley had arguably the most colorful and controversial personality in NBA history. He was one of the best trash talkers ever, and this man would be arguing during the game with his coach, teammates, opponents, referees, and fans. <laughs> and then he would deliver a cold-blooded performance Everybody. of, say, 25 points, 15 rebounds, 5 assists on 70% shooting, as if he was in That's deep focus right throughout the game. Numbers. With Barkley, it has never been boring. Chuck had the habit of expressing his opinion at any cost, no matter how much it clashed with good taste and social norms. And you could never guess what kind of controversial He's statement He's brutally honest, the media. He made jokes about journalists, fans, and teammates, but he often laughed at himself, which translated to an exceptional TV career on yeah. TNT's Inside the NBA. Yeah. With his quick thinking, humor, and the absolute lack of filter, Chuckster changed sports television forever and became the best sports analyst in TV history. Despite the fact he can't pronounce many of the current players' names or <laughs> recognize half of them. <laughs> hey, shout out to non uh, nonstop sports right here, man. Great video. Even though Ch Charles Barkley never won a ring, does that make him a loser? He's still winner in my eyes, man. You know, with the with like, bro, he won MVP with Jordan in the league. Do you know how tough that is? Not to just compete for MVP, but he won it. One, two. Two Olympic gold medals. So that's respect, man. That's respect. Big shout out to Charles Barkley. Um, yeah, that's gonna do it for this video, man. Hope y'all enjoy. Make sure y'all like, comment, and you're new, subscribe to the channel. We don't go nuts in one direction. And uh, yeah, man, I'll see y'all in a bit. Make sure I say well, say say must. Thank us very much, man. Peace. I'm out. Woo!